So now in this step, all I did, uh, if you notice some changes in the background, all I did was just put in some, <clears throat> you know, throwaway backgrounds in here, just really simple. Didn't wasn't even worth uh, showing. Just really simple gradations and stuff like that. I put a like a sort of a white uh, gradation coming from the top to sort of indicate like heat, like that's really bright. The sun is like right above us. That sort of a thing. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to do these cars. So here's a method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this layer, duplicate it. We're gonna duplicate that thing, and then we're going to go underneath it, the one that we duplicated it, and we're gonna hit control backspace and do that. No, we're not. We're gonna first, we're gonna lock the transparency, we're gonna pick the right color and do a backfill, and then all we got is it in white. Now, why did we do that? You will soon find out. We're going to take our line art that we have that we didn't destroy and put it on to multiply. Underneath this, we're going to start doing something called flats. Flats are tedious. Yet another tedious part. But you know what? No pain, no gain. So we just have to deal with it. So anyways, let's pick some colors and have at it. Let's go. Let's go get to it. So usually how I do it is I do the main things in the front. I'm sorry, I usually go from back to front. Back to front. So I'll go in and pick the things that are in the back. Uh, maybe I don't want it to be that color. Maybe I want it to be more grayish so that this one turns out. And I'll go in and literally take things that are more in the uh, more in the foreground and attack them later on. First thing I do when I'm doing flats is I go in and basically I go in and just try to establish the vast majority of the large shapes. So get get all the large shapes out of the way. So for example the van here we get that out of the way. We got this car here too. So anyways, I know the bottom part of this van has a like a darker trim on it. So we'll do that. And also the light cluster is dark too. So I'll we'll just go in. And I'm doing this with a, a non-anti-aliased brush. So if you notice, it's giving me that chunky line. In other words, pencil. So if you go into your brush and you turn it to pencil, you'll get the non-anti-aliased line I'm talking about. And the reason why I'm doing that is because then later on, if we want to change certain colors, we can pick the colors from this so-called flat layer. So this flat layer, what'll happen is that it'll, it'll always be there. And if we want to really quickly just say change the color of, you know, this trim level on the bottom, like this sort of dark gray trim, we can, easily go and select and it'll be perfect like for example we just turn off anti-aliasing and we go and we can oh, let's turn off contiguous oh, man. and it'll click it'll go right on the layer and it'll do it exactly to the point nothing more nothing less so that if we wanted to we could you know do like crazy color changes and nothing nothing would happen to the other colors. So it's very good. It works very well for characters too. If you wanna if you want to um, be able to change things later on down the line. Very good for clients as well too that have a, have a thing about changing their and all clients do. They've oh can you change this? You know what? We like this color better. You know what can you change this? And you know what? That's their right. They can do it. You know? That old saying, customer is always right, <laughs> or mostly right. So, believe you me, this will save you. This this will save you. Quick changes, quick edits, real fast. So it's good. Now, depending where it's dark and stuff, you'll be able to get away with more or less. You don't have to be so like extremely clean. And for the most part, I mean, like if you know that you're not going to be changing much stuff. I'm pretty sure about it then you can be a little bit more sloppy but generally they're they're just so useful like I've just used them so much over the years 
they're so useful that I can't uh, do without them. They're just really, really handy. So let's fill this in. This is the turn signal. The turn signal is not illuminated, so then it shouldn't be too bright. And we'll pick. Uh, well, actually, we won't do that. We'll pick sort of a gray for the headlamps because the headlamps are also not illuminated right now. Let's do that. No, the other one doesn't show up. And we'll worry about the shades later. And then, uh, that looks like that wiper got a little bit messed up. Like sometimes the inks don't scan quite the same way. So learn my, you know, lesson. Then forgot it. I'm like oh, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to try and keep it that you use the same inks. But sometimes you want to use different markers, and sometimes certain markers don't have the same type. Uh, ink quality or the same ink type sometimes the ink is they, they make the mix the inks differently so it's not like <clears throat> an archival type ink so it'll be sort of bluish and then it scans that way so those things you know little things you gotta be worried about so let's go in here so like I said you know to go from the larger shapes to smaller safest way to do it so actually I know that this is actually supposed to be metal so this should be gray this is gray this, I'm just looking at my reference make sure I remember it properly this should be dark here oh that's a little bit too dark let's not do it like that let's go like this there we go. Put one here too. Put that up there. There we go. So again, we're making these flats here so that we can select things easier down the line. And let's let's go and do that wiper properly. Let's just make it black for now. So for now, no, for for all time, it is going to be black. That's that's our. That's the way it's going to go. So we got one there, I got another wiper here. Let me do a backfill, fill it on in. Bam! Alright. Let's use that gray on this, this light here too. Slight difference, but different enough that it's noticeable. Okay, and make this car reddish. Um, usually the foreground elements, you don't want them to be as as punchy you know in this case I want us to notice the van and I want us to notice this sort of reddish car uh, that's looking sort of a little bit too Christmassy so let's let's change that okay, make it, I don't want to make it gray uh, yeah that's okay we'll do that the main thing is just to suggest I mean because it'll be in the shade suggest that this uh, this car here in front of us, directly in front of us, is in the shade and very close to us. So here I'm just trying to establish that there's like a lot of traffic type thing. And another car over here. This car is going to have light on it. So how do we want to do that? Do we want to make that green? Do we want to make that a little bit, maybe a little bit green? Okay. I'm going to make it this sort of lime green color. No, that's not lime green. Sort of this jade, jade green color. Because it'll go nice against the blue sky. Let me put the blue sky on, then you'll see. Turn it on. There we go. Turn on that blue sky. All right. Wrong layer. Let's color on the right layer. Okay. And then we'll see. Maybe I want to put a caution blur on that afterwards. Anyways, so we got that. Uh, maybe I'll change the color just a little bit more. <clears throat> and then we got the interior of the van. Let's color it this color for now. I mean for now. No. This is the color. That's it. This is the color. Uh, we'll change it to that because it's inside so it's darker. So these guys will all be in the shade as well too. I mean, for the most part, because the light's coming like, sort of from the top, 
So maybe, well, no, it'll be dark so that they're in the shade. It has that semblance of that. Now, let's see, uh, let's pick this color. The van is here. We'll do the, the girl's car in a second. So let's do that, make sure we got the van colors right. Pick uh, this gray here, put it there. And then, uh, what color did we do? And we did that one, okay. So now, let's get this going. So the window is rolled down here. So yeah, look at that, he's just such a peeping Tom, my gosh. Uh, no, we're not, we're not suspicious here, are we? And don't worry, some of those lousy uh, things will disappear, like around here. And uh, make sure it's clean. That's not clean. Let's fix that. There we go. So we can see what it looks like with those characters on. So, now, oh, we've got the lights on the girl's car. So let's do the grill. The grill will be like that. You know, and uh, later on, when I flat out the characters, it's it's largely the same thing, so I won't show it because it's it's redundant. Like you guys are already seeing how I'm doing it. This is pretty much how I go about doing the flats. Flats are the colors that are going to be underneath the shade. And generally it's easier to do them this way because at the end of uh you know like if if need be you can go in and change things like really in a quick and easy fashion quick and easy style and fashion so let's do that make that sort of grayish there we go it's sort of an old school sports car not sports cars, like an old school Audi. And uh, what type of interior? Might make it black. We want sort of tannish, maybe. Let's do that. Let's do that. Put that in. Okay. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Let's not do that. Let's make. It. Oh, actually, that towel will be a different color. But at any rate, let's put this in. So then, all this here belongs to, oops, all this here belongs to this car. So now I'll show you, if I want to change it, it's an easy change. Let me just make sure I got it all right. And go in and make sure, I don't think I got that steering wheel. So, here, here, okay. And the towel, the towel should be a nice color. Let's make the towel like yellow or something. Festive, so. The towel yellow, I mean, I'll change the tint of the car as well too. It's an easy fix. If I wanna change that, maybe I want it to be like brighter, like sort of like that it's sort of like old school butter, butter leather type feel to it. So let's do the leather parts and that sort of that. And then we'll do the, whoops, we'll do the steering wheel. We'll do the steering wheel in like gray. And then we'll put a shine on the steering wheel too when that time comes. Is usually how it works is that the top of the dashboard, the steering column and steering wheel, and most of the center console usually, usually, especially in this, like I'm trying to do like a sort of a 1990s car on purpose. Usually they were like black. The reason why the top of the dashboard is usually black is so that it doesn't reflect the sun onto the inside of the windshield and then cause a glare so that you can't see. So usually if they want to do like a light interior colors, it's like for the seats and stuff. It's not for, it's not for the top of the dashboard. Usually, I've seen it before, but not, it's not common. If you, now that you heard me say it, you'll notice it a lot more. 
you go and check and you'll notice that your dashboard usually on your car will be a dark color so that it doesn't uh, reflect. Man, so sloppy. There we go. It's dark, it's dark. Yeah, well, don't worry. We'll fix it. I'll make even, I'll even make the floor like uh, grayish as well, too. If you hear the howling, that's wind out. It's very windy outside. Hope, hope we don't lose power. Okay, now I'll go in and repick that yellow. There's another thing I usually do is that I'll just um, like go way over the line with one color and then pick that color and then go back and like be more careful about it. So that I'm not cutting the line on both sides. I'm cutting the line like on one side. So, and these are these flats. This this takes the most time. That's why I'll spare you guys on the uh, on the next part that you don't have to you don't have to see this. But it's important. You have to see it at least once. You have to see it at least once. You have to see it so that you can understand what I'm talking about. So now when you hear me say, "Oh, flats, flats." Oh, I hate flats. Now you'll know why I hate flats. But it's a love-hate relationship because they're really they're really great as well too so let's do this now remember um, I did like a good amount of the shading on the page so it's not gonna take us that long to do this most of its actually highlights stuff let's put that there it was open all right and you know what I want to I want to change this as well too that's uh, this is bothering me let's make this a little bit a different color. Let's make it more something more this way. I'm fill it. I have that gradient on 36. Let's put it to about 50 something. And we'll do it for those for the sun visors too and the silhouettes. So yeah, silhouettes of the characters. Sun visors. And then fill it with a drop fill. If I would have done the backspace, it wouldn't have worked because what would happen is that uh, it would it would fill all the way to where the mask is. But I didn't want it to fill. Like here, I'll show you. You see what'll happen? Like if I do a alt backspace fill, it fills all the way to this this region. But if I do a, a G fill. It'll fill like only to where the end of the uh, selection is, so it's more useful that way. And oh, that's the girl's head. And I should probably even just have that sort of roughed in there and fill that in. All right, good, good. Now, oh, I forgot this towel down here. Let's do that. Doon, 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 doon. Oh, it looks like a little bit of overspill there. Put that. Color it in. Invert the mask. And then color the bottom part in a little bit too. There we go. Lovely. We love it. It's marvelous. Save it. Save it, David. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to just put in some general shades that are going to help us uh, establish all of these uh, these colors. It will help us establish these colors. One second, let me make that a little bit lighter. Just a little bit lighter. I think that's a better idea. So, what we'll do is we'll use our friend the multiply layer again, but we don't we don't really have to use it all that much um, because of the fact that again I did I did do a lot of the legwork here already with um, with the markers. So a lot of this stuff is is already pretty much done. But even still, there's more to do. So let's go let's see how much we can get done here. So we put on multiply. And 
there you go and it's locked onto what we did is we create a clipping mask so now it's clipped on top of the flats so now wherever I shade it won't go over onto the sky as soon as I take off the clipping mask then it goes onto the sky so clipping masks are good for keeping uh, things uh, organized now let's see the sun the sun where is that sun coming from so let's do let's do this car first I'll just go in and just manually mask it so zoom in take a brush and we'll turn that to brush from pencil and we'll have the spacing up and then what we'll do is we'll just start roughing in some of the shade now that the light is coming from the other side of the car so we need to just sort of hint at that and what we'll do is turn up the hardness here for the lights turn down the turn up the flow we want that to be more of a sharp sort of sharp sort of line this don't be alarmed if I get if I get quiet if I go into silent mode it's just concentration so now what I'll do is I'll take a gradient here and I'm gonna put that gradient on multiply and you'll see to what effect so what happens let me pick a darker gray so what happens here is now we I'm dropping repeated gradients over parts of this and then I'll go back with the original gray that I had and sort of do like a type of a backlighting just really slight really slight in spots mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there we go a little bit down there too I'll do more later let's erase back some spots too wherever I erase it's going to go brighter of course because I'm erasing that shade layer so this is also useful as well too. A lot of control with this method. A lot of control. And that's what it's all about. Is you want the control and you want to be able to do this uh, quickly. There's some of the shine there. Oh, maybe a little bit of a catch there. Like that. And then some on the mirror. There. Save it. Undo the mask. There we go. So that's one car partially done. And we'll do more. We'll do the shine on the on the glass and all that sort of stuff but first things first we always you know we do it one step at a time for me I do it like I'll do all the shades first and then I go in and do all of the uh, you know highlights and, and what have you and do one car at a time so I'll do a few more and then I'll pause the video and then show you but this is I'll do one more and then you can see how pretty much I'm doing it and then uh, I'll shade one more and then I'm going to show you guys the uh, some of the techniques I do for lighting as well too meaning the the actual uh, highlights so that'll be useful too so let me do a general gradient here like this very simple very simple because the thing is is like I said before we already established it on the um, on the actual line art like on the actual real the real art we have established it and so we don't have to do that much here that's the nice thing so take this take that and a little bit of shade for that that windshield wiper and then the shadow from the mirror would drop down like that because the sun is like pretty much almost above let's do it nicer than that a little bit thinner and I'll make it stop there and let's see we also have to do under here under the wheel well and then let's get rid of that mask and that mask here like this do a little gradient action 
not much. And zoom out. And there we go. So that's already starting to look somewhat lit. And uh, all right, so let's let's save that there. Now what we'll do is we'll do just do a few really really easy highlights over top of the line art layer. So over the line art layer now. Now typically with how I do glass is I always usually at this point I'm using uh, screens. And I'll show you what I'm doing. So right now I'm carefully masking around this windshield wiper and the shade that's underneath the windshield wiper. I'm over top of the line art layer and I'm that way for I'm like this for a reason. Because now if I go ahead and and what I'll do is uh, I'm actually going to turn this to uh, screen. I'll actually drop a just a gradient here, a screen. I'll take it off of multiply too, put it on normal and put it on maximum intensity. So now what happens is that you see that it it automatically uh, darkens or darkens lightens the lines like reduces their, uh, their their opacity seemingly what's happening is just the the um, screen is just over top of it so now you know I shouldn't have it here because his window should be open so that should actually uh, go darker because then there is no uh, window there because his window is open because remember they're boiling hot and this is one of those vans where the back the side window on this door can open as well too so these should actually theoretically be dark because they're open we can see into it so I'll do it this way oh, maybe not that dark maybe like this dark that's good enough there we go and maybe I'll do that in here too just to enforce that just a little bit more make it a little bit more apparent now the mirror and the front of the dashboard are all closer to the light maybe even in the light but this is like darker so I can make that darker so there we go so now we have the glass there now we need to do this glass over here too now if you forget what color you used all you have to do is just do hide all the layers go up to it hit alt color pick hit so G for gradient alt color pick picks it turn back on all the layers and then let's do this one now we'll go here here and here now we're going to do the windshield on this guy this car like so there we go very simple very easy stuff and what else uh, well, we'll do we'll do one little thing here. So another thing is like I usually just pick the color that I'm doing the highlight for, and like just draw it on the screen layer. So in other words, I picked that sort of uh, that sort of grayish brown color, and I used it as a uh, as an actual screen color. And then what I also do sometimes is that I'll actually like double pick it again like I'll pick that same color again so it's like it's brighter and like go in and so okay so I'll pick that yellow and you know I'll do this one here too and then white's always good for stuff like this too but I'll show you a way to get it really brilliant so what you do is you pick your lasso tool you put a feather on it of about I think about two is good and let's just see what happens and backfill it no well, two is a little bit too blurry let's do one let's see what happens if we do one backfill oh, that's a little bit that's a little bit better so all I'm doing here is just taking my lasso tool just drawing my shapes and alt backfilling them so that you get those those white shines then if you want you can also just use a uh, brush as well too and then erase back what you don't like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there we go there we go we'll do it for this one's lights too 
with like halogen lights. And usually I use like a piercing like white so that it looks like it really is like shiny. And we can do that also for the, um, what we'll do is we'll take off the, we'll actually take off the feather and we'll use the, actually we'll use the, what do you want to call it, the, this tool, poly, polygonal, polygon tool. And carefully go here and let's do this here and this as well too. And okay, some of the some of the bumper as well. And then we'll we'll round it off. We'll stop. We'll stop there. Move on to other things. I know I'm taking my time here. To do all right. Let's do it like that. I picked like an orangey color. And there we go. And it is sort of not anti aliased for a reason that it's more sharp. And uh, I'll do do one more thing. Usually, where wherever the um, wherever the sun is, you know, like usually I put like a white sort of. Oops, wrong color. I put a white sort of haze. Whoa, my gosh, there we go. Like that. And then you can sort of just sort of smudge it just just ever so slightly. Very slight. Let me have like sort of suggesting like where the sun is. A really bright spot. And then uh, oh yeah, the other thing. One more thing. One more thing. And then we're then we'll stop it. Uh, I have to do the tops of the windshield wipers. Do one there. One there, like this. You know, because this is these little details that are. You know, I don't know, I find that, you know, people seem to notice. It's like, oh, wow, I can't believe you did this and that. and It's really shocking, you know, that you spent so much time on this and that. So anyways, I'll stop there. But that's what we got. So now we have this effect. I'll show you some more effects as well later, too. I have to still do some fixes. There's some other stuff that we need to... We need to fix up here as well. You know, clean it up just a little bit more. Overall, that's what I wanted to show you. So that I guess technically that's also background coloring as well too, like more Mac and tech that sort of thing. And uh, but then when we get near the end of it, uh, I'll show you the basic polish, like just like how to sort of uh, do all those tricks to sort of make the background seem more. So what I'm going to do now. So I'm gonna go and I'll uh, I'll color I'll shade in all of this as well too. And then we'll get to the uh, get to the characters. The fun part. We'll get to the characters. All right, guys. So take care.